Welcome back, guys. I have a new thing, okay? It is a, I have to read my phone because I'm a dummy. It is a Monoprice Maker Ultimate 2 3D printer. Um, and it is much fancier than old schlobby thing that I had before. And I will show you guys a picture of this and the old one. So we're gonna unbox this and then I'm gonna do some things. Okay, so this is it. It was extremely well packaged. Like it's all surrounded in foam and like some really thick cardboard and everything like that. So very, very impressed. Um, and all of the plexiglass has like you know, the anti-scratch film stuff on it. Or maybe it's just really shitty. I realized, no, I think it's got a film on it. Let's see here. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. Um, but it's all completely assembled, it looks like. Um, this is like a super reasonably priced 3D printer. I wasn't expecting it to be really anything fancy um but being like all assembled and fully enclosed it came with looks like this is some white filament probably pla let's see pla white 1.75 and half a kilogram it's probably half a kilogram and then let's see, eight gig micro SD card, micro SD card reader, metal scraper, USB cable, switch cable, motor cable, a set of Allen keys, yellow tape, spanner, water washable glue stick, user manual, US power cord, EU power cord, UK power cord, filament hook, and a thank you card. So it came with way more power cords than I need because I am an American, so I don't need the other two, but it's kind of cool that they just include you with all three. Um, then glue stick, tape I would assume that is for the print bed. I have blue tape that I'll use. And oh, that is a hefty user manual right there. Holy cow. Is it all in English? Let's see here. Looks like it's a full English manual. And dang, 41, oh. Yeah, no, it's a full... Wow, that's kind of cool. I, I'm going to have to... I mean, I've been 3D printing a while, but I bet there's some useful stuff in there. That's pretty cool that it comes with a whole user manual. There's the SD card. Not sure what those cables are for. Maybe there is a little bit of assembly required, but nothing crazy. i got to figure out how to get all of this foam out of here without breaking anything. And then uh, we'll get it powered up and uh, just probably print something simple with this... PLA, I have P-Tag, um, but I didn't take care of it properly, so it's probably not going to print well, and this stuff is fresh, so we'll just try something with that, and I'll see if I can get this film off the doors so that I can see through it better, but super cool that it's all enclosed. That's pretty nice. So, here we go. set up here um, there was um, a film on these doors that you can scrape off uh, it's probably better to take the hinges off to get it all out because you can't really get it all out um, but they do clean up very nicely there's a little 
holder here for the filament. Filament feeds up through tube in there, goes into the print head, and then you plug it in. It did come with um, two extra cables that I can't find what they plug into. So maybe it's for a dual extruder or something. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look into that. Um, but it's all plugged in. Let's uh, turn it on. Oh, let me take this SD card because it has a couple of files on it. And we'll just try that. I think I have some PLA files on there. And... Oh, look at that. It's pretty quiet. It's nice. That one, when you fire it up, it doesn't like it very much anymore. It's getting a little old. That is the Prusa i3 from like, I don't know, eight or nine years ago now. Um, okay, welcome. Next. Step one, load filament. Next, heating nozzle. Okay, so it looks like it's going to heat the nozzle to, I'm going to assume this is in Celsius and it's gonna heat it to 210. In the quick start guide that it comes with, which is this guy, um, it walks you through all of this, kind of. Um, so you do have to unbolt some brackets here. It comes super well packaged. There's two brackets in there that uh, you have to unbolt so that you can move that around. You do have to cut all of the foam out because uh, there's no access doors on the sides or anything. Um, so you cut all that out. You take the brackets off and then you can slide the head back and remove the brackets. There's some silicone wrapped around the back there. You cut the zip ties on that. Basically any yellow zip tie. Um, wow, that heated up like super quick. Um, that was super quick. That was awesome. Holy cow. So far I am extremely impressed so it says wait for filament to purge so it's just dumping some filament right now uh, you can purge more or you can continue so we're going to continue and I'm gonna pull that off of there um, it did come with this tape already on the deck you could probably pull that off I didn't because I'm just going to tape it anyways so uh, we inserted the SD card, print from SD card. Um, oh, okay. Looks like it is not reading my SD card, so... We will just quit. Um, okay, let's see here. Prepare. Let's auto home. Okay. So that homes everything. Let's do, so this printer has, um, will auto level the bed. So I want to try that because uh... Okay, so I'm a little bit disappointed. Um, I have done some more research. And uh, as... So this is version 2. Um, the 170 millimeter. Um, it doesn't actually auto-level the bed. It um, just puts it in the right spot for you to do it. So it's kind of like... A little bit of a fib that I'm not super excited about but I suppose it's still better and at least like uh, instead of like this printer over over here um, you know it's in like a sturdy box so it's not as susceptible to to moving around like this one over here it's a big plastic frame that's super flimsy so I guess it's better Actually, we're pretty good right there. A little bit of resistance. It's perfect. So now, click the button. 
Make sure that it's still good. Yeah, we're good. Click next. And it moves the print head. Okay, we're gonna hit quit. And let's go auto home. And that's gonna home all the axis. And then turns out that you have to download the software that comes with it in order to use it which I'm gonna try and find a way around because I'm not a big fan of their software but I just loaded up a bushing that I designed for some snowmobiles a while ago should print pretty quick it's all their recommended settings and everything and we will see how it does all I did was level the bed and power it up so here she goes. Okay, so as you can see, something went wrong. I don't know if it was the way I leveled the bed, or if it was the program, or what. But let's see. Um, I think I have... Now that I have access to these files, um, let's just try printing something like this. So this is something I did in a different program. I am very impressed with how quickly this heats up. I mean, compared to my Prusa over here, this printer is a lot more up to snuff on some stuff. So. I'm really hoping I can get it to work properly. Okay, got all heated up. So once the bed was done heating, it started heating up the nozzle. And it homed everything, and now it's moving the bed up. So let's see what it does on its initial little start up here. That looks much better. I don't know if you guys can see very well. But it's actually printing now. So it was a program issue. Which, that was the program that it came with. That I downloaded on my computer. And this is something I think I believe I made it in... Slicer? Slicer or Cura? I use those two. Slicer I prefer. The Cura is kind of... A little less finicky sometimes it depends on how smart you are and I'm not very smart so Okay, so just a little bit of a review. This thing's been printing for quite a while. Uh, my camera died so you didn't see all of where it's at right now, but I just wanted to go over this little display here really quick because it's different than my Prusa. Um, so it has the total elapsed time right here, so it's an hour and 18 minutes in, and then it's got that little bar. And that little bar is how much it's printed um, so it doesn't have like an actual percentage maybe that's what's supposed to be over here by this FR 100% not sure what that is it's been 100% the whole time and then it's got the location in the X Y and Z axis that the printer head is at you've got your bed temp over here you've got your 
nozzle temp over here and you've got your fan speed right here, percentage, I guess, of speed. And then your file type right here, which this is P2P point-to-point -point mount G-code. Um, yeah, it's just a little bit different. It is printing super well. Um, again, I don't remember what the speed was that I set this up at, or I, I would say it's probably going a little bit too fast, honestly. Um, but I set it up a long time ago and just had it on an SD card, so not 100% sure what any of the settings are other than 60 degree bed temp and 200% or 200 degree Celsius nozzle temp. Um, and even with that part missing of the bed where I screwed up trying to use their software, it's adhering to the bed pretty well. Um, another thing is I left the top open because it's already starting to scratch this plexiglass um, because of this. So I might like 3D print something that holds this at a tighter angle or something, figure that out somehow um, so that it's not scratching this all up. I mean, it's kind of already too late, but it'd be nice to keep it clear and see through for a long time. Um, and in the future videos, I'll try and unplug this LED here so that I can set you guys up and you guys can see a little bit better because that light kind of screws up the whole image um yeah and then if you guys want to see a video of this one and this one at the same time let me know and I will do that I'm also gonna have to do a video on how to set up a file and everything like that or at least how I do it um so once this is finished I'll show you that and then we will call it good Alright guys, it's finishing up the final layers right now. I think it does three top layers, and this is number two, if I remember right. And it's done. Starting its cool down. Here the fan's still going. Well, that was adhered on there pretty good, but that came out pretty darn nice. Especially for not being fine-tuned or anything. So, there you have it. I will definitely be doing some more in-depth videos on this guy and that guy in the future. Uh, if you have anything you guys want to see printed, let me know and I will see what I can do. Thanks for watching.